Hey, what's up? My name is Seb and I'm back with another flat zone theme tutorial and today I'm going to talk about the floating boxed header. You know, we all know the stuck floating header, but now it's a kind of a boxed layout that you can see a lot of these days on websites, especially when you don't have a lot of navigation items. This really works. It gives, it gives a kind of app feeling, you know, when you're having an application on your mobile phone, it has also a kind of a floating header setup. So, you know, it's a trending thing. It comes and goes, uh, but I got a lot of questions from the Flatstone community who were asking me, hey, Sepp, how can we create this? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this by only using the Flatstone uh, native theme options and custom CSS. I've already uh, tried it with my own website on Sepp de la Web, uh, but I'm al already creating a new website that doesn't contain the floating header. So maybe by the time you're watching this video, uh, I'm not using the floating header anymore, but maybe you're interested in using it for your own project. And again, if you're having a lot of navigation items, like a big WooCommerce shop with the search bar and all this kind of stuff, this doesn't really work. But you know, for business websites, small websites with not a lot of menu items, you can create that minimal uh, feeling. So let's dive in. Uh, first of all, I've created like the basic flatsome setup, nothing much. Um, only I've created a section with a hero. So there's something uh, that can be placed uh, behind because if you don't have a background color behind, you don't see that floating header setup. So that's the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to set up a color in the background. To do this, you go to the theme options, you go to layout, and then uh, let me just get my own pastel color. So I take this color I go back and here, if it go, if, we, if I went too fast, let me just go back in the Flatsum theme options. You need to go to layout and maybe, you know, Flatsum 4 is coming up. So maybe if you're watching this video, it, it, it looks entirely different to set up, but the, it is important to set up your content background color. And you can do that here on the left, paste a certain color in. And as you can see, we now have a background color throughout the whole website. I'm going to publish. And the next thing what we want to set up, I've also set, uh, created uh, four simple steps. We want to remove the background of the header main, because as you can see, the header main at the moment is containing a full background color. So I'm going back, clicking on header, clicking on header main. And here you can see I can select a background color. And by default, it's white. Uh, with uh, 0 0.9 transparency, but if I you know drag it all the way down, it's fully transparent and that's what you want to uh, have. So that's the second step. Uh, the third step is to disable the divider because it's very difficult to see, but by default, Flatsum has a kind of divider underneath the header main. So I'm going to disable this by clicking on the check mark. And I'm going to publish, I'm going to close, and as you can see, this is my, you know, my, um, my starting point to really uh, create that floating header uh, with custom CSS. To do this, you know, there are different ways to inject or insert custom CSS. I have my preferable uh, plugins for that. I'm using uh, WP Codebox, but you could also go to the theme file editor and then add it in your child, uh, 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 child theme in the stylesheet.css. And you could even go to Flatsum Advanced and then go to the custom CSS section. It's up to you, um, but there are different ways to add CSS. So I'm just going to my WP code box. I already created the CSS file demo.css. And here's where I'm going to um, import or paste the custom CSS that I've created for you. So let me explain you a little bit. Uh, first, let me insert this inside my project. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, click on the link that will take you to the tutorial page on Septilla Web to, to get access to this um, code. And if you're watching this video on our Access Plus member area, you can easily just um, dra dra um, drag, <laughs> scroll down and get the code. So let me paste it in. And I've created little comments to explain what is what. Uh, floating header styling. So this is the first... Um, Float. Let me just first save it so you can see the actual result. Tux. And as you can see, it looks already 
really good you, do, uh, you don't need to do anything uh, besides that so the first thing is the margin top I've created a margin on the top so when you're having a top bar so maybe you don't want to have the top bar uh, because as you can see at this example there's no top bar but if you have that uh, top bar into place for whatever reason you want to have that margin top so you have that space between the floating header and the top bar uh, the max width so this is the maximum size of your uh, floating header you can even you know make it a little bit smaller and then you you will get this result it totally depends on how many items you have inside your header of course uh, border radius I've you know set up nice round corners uh, there's some padding you know in between so there's padding uh, on the left and on the right um, there's the background color so at the moment it's set to white as you can see and I even applied a background blur so I'm not sure if yeah I think I've seen it here there's just a little blur that you as you can see the letters are there it creates a kind of a transparency effect that I've also added to my own website it's not you know it's not needed you could also go for the background color fully white and then you know take out the both uh, both CSS classes to uh, to disable the blur effect it's up to you um, but I personally really like it when you scroll you have that little blur effect um, so that's the only thing what you need for in terms of the header styling and then we have the header main and it's a kind of a padding that you need for the mobile tablet so let me just disable this and refresh it will still look the same but when you're going on mobile you can see it's touching the edges on the left and the right so you don't want to have that on mobile and tablet so now when I refresh and I make a scroller you can still see there's still some padding on the left and the right what you want to have in the end so that's the header padding and then it's the uh, remove header shadow so uh, by default um, when you scroll down there's a little shadow applied when you're having the stock element so let me just also show you I'm going to just adding a gap of 1000 pixels so you can see what I am talking about so now there's no shadow but when I n um, I won't have that shadow into place then you can see this ugly stuck header shadow will be applied so you want to make sure that the uh, the box shadow is gone so you don't get that effect and it's nicely laying on top of all the content that is um, here inside your page so it's easy as that you know modify the custom CSS to whatever needs um, I'm very curious what you can make of it so share uh, if you if you created something awesome with it if you're having questions uh, let me know I'm not really giving you know technical support on all the coding and all the stuff of course I hope it, it all works out for you uh, but you will probably need to modify it with your own setup and also your flat some theme options so whenever you're, you're no, you know you want to have like a double layer header uh, you know you need to modify certain stuff and uh, certain custom CSS is needed so thanks again for watching um, see you in the next video Bye-bye.